Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about some reasons you should buy a cheap Chinese amplifier or a couple of reasons not to buy a cheap Chinese amplifier. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about why you should or shouldn't buy a cheap Chinese amplifier. Today's sponsor is Warby Parker. Thank you, Warby Parker. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Never has there been a better time to get into hi-fi because one can go out and get a decent and sometimes a really good amplifier for $60. Now granted, it's got one input, two channel amplifier, maybe no tone controls, but still $60. You can buy an amp that puts out decent usable power and it sounds great. And with holiday sales, it can be even cheaper. There is a very, very good integrated amplifier. It's called the IEMA D03. It's $130. Comes with a DAC, a Bluetooth, subwoofer out, and it sounds pretty good. Also has a remote control. That's crazy. $130 for all of that. And it has usable power. And it's not just companies like Pile and Rockville that they have always sold cheap products but there are a bunch of chinese companies now company maybe we'll use the term companies loosely there's a bunch of chinese brands that all have very affordable stuff and it's all direct to the customer so what are the other reasons why you should buy a cheap chinese amplifier well let's find out huge thank you to warby parker today's sponsor warby parker Provides everything you need for your eyes, whether it be contact lenses, sunglasses, prescription glasses. You can shop online or in person. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. I know, crazy, right? The coolest thing about Warby Parker is you can try on five pairs of glasses at home. Go to warbyparker.com slash cheap audio man. Then you pick out the one you like, then you send them back. And if you don't like them, you don't have to buy any. And when you get the box, you can open it up and there's stuff inside. Not only stuff like this, but five pairs of glasses. And the funnest thing about it is you get to try on some glasses. Like these. These are the Ames wide for big faces. They're the jet matte black with polished silver. Or how about these? A little bit round. These are the Callum wide balsam matte. That's the color of these. How about these beauties? I like these too. These are the Wilkie. They come in black matte eclipse. But I need some sunglasses too. No problem, says Warby Parker. How about the toddies? These are wide. Seaweed crystal is the color of these. Or my favorites, we can go old school. The Harris Wide Jet Black. If you've never done this before, don't worry about it. Warby Parker has a quiz. You tell them things about yourself and then what size your skull is and then what type of materials and colors you like and they give you a whole bunch of options. After you try them on and you send them back, you just stick this to it. It's an included shipping label so you don't have to worry about anything. Take this, you put it on that, and you send them back. So go over to warbyparker.com slash cheap audio man and get five glasses to try on at home. It's convenient. They're great quality at fair prices. Warbyparker.com slash cheap audio man. Number two, they're tiny. Look how small they are. You can put this anywhere you want it. Look how small this one is. Yeah. Why do you want small? Well, you can put it wherever you want to. You can put it on your desk. You can put it behind a fern. You can do this and put it next to a book. It's actually smaller than most books that I have. Why? Think soundbar replacement. Think short on space. This thing doesn't take up much rack space. This thing doesn't need a rack. If you're worried about putting components in your living room or underneath your TV, don't. You probably stick this to the wall somewhere or behind your TV if you wanted to. The opportunities that a device this small opens up for your entertainment enjoyment is simply amazing. Now, I have turned a full size receiver up on its side before because I was short on space. But you could put this under your hat if your head was big enough and the hat was big enough. We don't all have the option of having a big rack. Would be nice if we all had a big rack, but we don't all have a big rack. Sometimes we don't have a rack at all. That's why if you're looking, <laughs> that's why if you're short on rack space, maybe you should look. <laughs> that's why, 
That's why if you're short on rack space, maybe you should look at a cheap Chinese amplifier. Got a couple of nice racks back here. Number three, they may be made in China, but they sure use a lot of European and American parts. Most of these amp chips inside these amplifiers are either Texas instruments, which are my favorite, not just because they're from Texas, but because they sound real good, or they're Infineon chips, which are European chips. Op amps are generally European or American. Bluetooth chips, again, American or European. DAC chips, American or European. Yes, they're on a probably a Chinese board in a Chinese enclosure put together by Chinese people, but it doesn't mean that it's all Chinese content. So even though you may be getting this, it's powered by a quality chipset from the United States or Europe. So don't poo poo on these just because they're made in China. Now we all have the right to vote with our wallets. And if you don't wanna buy things from China, then don't buy things from China. There are a lot of great options here in the US from people like Schkit, from people like Jashelli Labs, from people like Emotiva, but a lot of the big companies, a lot of the names that we know are also manufactured overseas. So just because it's a Fuzzy Audio, an IEMA, FX Audio, or anything like that, doesn't mean it's a bad product. I would argue that if you looked at the back of a lot of the products that you have in your house already, a lot of them are made in China. Number four, crazy power. Now, we need to take this statement with a bit of a grain of salt. Not all the time are they actually putting out a ton of power. And sometimes the claims, the stated power outputs are at 10% total harmonic distortion, which isn't really that usable. Or there's no THD mentioned at all. So while some put out some decent power, others maybe don't. How do you know? Well, I don't know. I actually just bought a rig. So I bought a O-scope with some dummy loads. So I'm going to try to start to test these amps for their actual output at unclipped levels. So as soon as it starts clipping, I'll say, hey, it puts out X amount of power at four ohms or eight ohms, which I think is gonna be a ton of fun. There are websites out there that do testing for power output, but they don't test like all the products that I reviewed. Once I get this thing hooked up, it shouldn't take long at all to be able to tell you what the actual power is or the usable power is out of these amplifiers. Now, I'm not just gonna test Chinese amplifiers. I'm gonna test them all, all the amps that come in here. I'm gonna test. It's gonna be a lot of fun. My first receiver was a little realistic, 12 watts a channel. And it was loud enough that my mother would come in and tell me to turn it down. I can guarantee you that this is putting out more than 12 watts a channel. Now the Crown Drive Core is a perfect example of this. This is not a Chinese company, and it's probably made in China, but those things can put out an insane amount of power. And the Class D technology is, well, it might not be exactly the same, it is similar within these little amps. These things are way more efficient than Class AB, which means they put out hardly any heat at all, and they can put out a lot of power. Sometimes you can upgrade the power supply like the IEMA A07 or the A08 Pro. So you want more power? Get a more powerful power brick. 48 volt, 10 amp power bricks. You can find them. I've listened to a lot of these amps, and outside of a few speakers like the Mica RB42, that is 83 dB efficient. These amplifiers are going to drive just about anything that you throw at them and drive them well. The fact that you can get even 50 clean watts out of a $60 amplifier is nuts. Small footprint, small price, big power. Some cheap Chinese amplifiers do that for you, but you kind of have to wade through it. It's like a DVD bin. Sometimes made in Manhattan's all the way on top, but you have to dig down and find a copy of Blade Runner. Extended edition. Number five, some of these companies actually listen and improve their products. I gave a very unfavorable review to the Fozzy Audio TB10D, the first generation. I posted it, I bought it, I posted it. They sent me an email. They said, hey, we fixed it. And they sent me out a new one. I was blown away. I did a full video. And if I remember to put it right here, I'll put it right here. I did a full video on that how impressed I was because a lot of companies are going to get defensive. Fozzy Audio reached out to me and said, we get it, it wasn't very good, we made it better. 
can we send you one and you listen to it? And I did, and it sounds great now. So some of these smaller companies are willing to take in feedback and then change their products accordingly. Not all companies are like that. Now, not all Chinese AMP companies are like that either, but some are. And I think that's pretty spectacular that a silly video from me can cause them to actually improve a product. Let's talk about some reasons why you shouldn't buy a cheap Chinese amplifier. Reliability. Some of these aren't very good. Some of them fall apart. It's obvious when you pick some of these up that there are some QA related issues or a lack of QA. So not everyone may go under the most stringent of inspection before it goes out the door. Maybe loose speaker terminals on the back. Maybe the RCAs are switched or in invert. I was inverted. What movie is that from? But I'll say this, it's probably getting better. Some of these amplifiers though, just switch up chipsets mid run. They'll keep the same model number and then they'll have a completely different chipset. Sometimes our model numbers are confusing too, like the Sapage. There's another version of the A28 that's completely different than this. This is just the 2022 version. The T9 had some reported clicking issues, especially with the USB input. Some failed, some popped. When there's a product that's this cheap, this affordable, corners are gonna be cut. And to be fair, it takes years to really figure out and implement a solid QA protocol in the manufacturing process. And if you have a lot of turnover in the workforce, sometimes QA, sometimes that culture isn't always implemented well, especially on really affordable products. I've only had a couple of products that haven't worked or had some QA issues. And the irony is that it wasn't even the cheapest of the cheap companies. One of the TRS inputs on a PA5 from Topping just came loose. Now, there's issues with QA with US products. I've heard issues from some of my favorite companies. So there's no guarantee if you buy any product that it's gonna be perfect or you're not gonna have any issues. My Marantz receiver had HDMI issues. I've had other products where the knobs have fallen off. There can be reliability issues and quality control problems with some of these products. I haven't seen it being like a systemic issue, but some people have had issues. Service. Customer service can be an issue. I had a email string forwarded, forwarded to me from one of my viewers and it was basically them freaking out because they didn't get the customer service they thought they should get. And frankly, I think they were right. I don't always think it's just because they want to give you the middle finger and say, no, you're not getting any customer service. Sometimes I think it can be a language issue or language barrier. But also I think some companies get very defensive when somebody says something negative about their product. That's why when you're buying these products, I think you should do it through a retailer that has a return policy and maybe a liberal return policy. I know some people don't like Amazon, that's fine. But if you buy from Amazon, chances are you're going to be able to return this product if you don't like it. And if you're buying in the holiday season, ho ho ho, you probably get two months till the end of January to try out Audition. And if you don't like it, return it. Or if there's quality issues, return it. So not only is there maybe some issues with customer service, there could also be issues with even communicating with customer service. So you should take that into consideration before you buy one of these cheap Chinese amplifiers. Final thoughts. Now I am N of one, right? So sample size is one. I've talked to some other people too. Most of the experiences that I've had with Chinese cheap Chinese amplifiers has been overwhelmingly positive. I have almost all, almost always have my expectations been exceeded by not only the performance, but the sound and sonic characteristics of a lot of these cheap Chinese amplifiers. It's not all roses and gravy though. You could get a bum cheap Chinese amplifier. If you're thinking about getting one of these, I would get it and put it through its paces in the first 30 days. Make sure you try it on real good, like a set of shoes and go try to slosh through the mud with your amplifier. Don't do that. Give it a workout though. Move it around a little bit. Actuate those levers, turn those knobs and make sure they don't fall off. And read reviews. Talk to other people in different communities. Find out what their experience is with them. Because usually if there's issues with some of these products, it's going to get out all over the messages boards. It's 
like the reddits subreddit hashtag r cheap chinese amplifier forward slash r forward slash cheap chinese amplifier i don't know you run a risk you run a risk with these products you run a risk with any product really i think these are getting better though even in the short two years that i've been doing this the quality on these cheap Chinese amplifiers has been improving. It could be because they're just copying and pasting other designs. They are figuring out what works and what doesn't work and they're implementing those changes. Personally, I think the benefits outweigh the risks. And if you do it right, you purchase through a good retailer, then the risks are even more mitigated. Long term, who knows? I've had a lot of products that have been working for 20 years. A lot of amplifier, a lot of electronics just continue to work for a long time. Is this thing going to last 20 years? I don't know. It's lasted two years though, and I haven't had any issues with it. I think if you get a good one, chances are you're probably going to be able to get five, maybe even 10 years of service out of it. If you don't abuse it. The same can be said with anything else though. You could get a receiver could be super humid. There could be toxins in the air that affect the electronic. I don't know. There could be a lot of things that go wrong with any type of equipment. But if you're on a tight budget, you may not have a lot of choices. So I'm glad that all of these different Chinese, cheap Chinese amplifiers exist. I wonder how many times I said cheap Chinese amplifiers in this video. I'm glad they exist because it gives an opportunity for someone to enjoy music that may be on a very tight budget. Some people hate them. I'm, I kind of love them. I'm glad they're here. I'm glad they work. A lot of people say you get what you pay for. Let's think about flat screen TVs. Like flat screen TVs today are probably better than they were 20 years ago. I remember there was a 42 inch flat screen TV on my submarine. It was like 10 grand in the late nineties. You can buy a decent flat screen TV for 300 bucks now. Probably a 55 inch. So you don't always get what you pay for because sometimes technology trickles down. People get better at making better equipment at a lower price because of economies of scale. Whatever it is, just because you're spending big money on an amplifier doesn't guarantee it's going to be awesome. Sometimes they're just nailing you with margin, margin on top of margin on top of margin. I'm fairly confident that Fozzy Audio, IEMA, they're operating on pretty slim margins because I've talked to them about additional discounts before and they've just flat out said, we can't do it. So I think you're getting a lot for your money here. Is it perfect? No, but nothing's really perfect. If you think about it, I think they have a place and that place is bringing people into the hobby, replacing a sound bar or getting your kid into the hobby too. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap money, man. Every single night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Facebook, Patreon only Discord server, you can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. Don't feel compelled to buy, but if you do, it supports the channel because I get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more, though. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe buy one of these cheap Chinese amplifiers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.